dudes with attitudes, let's go. It's the two dudes and the attitudes ruthless, aggressively speaking, so let's do this. We're riding and denting, they here to get your attention, the five-star broadcast, yeah, start to the ending. Whether it's the E or it's all the E, the two dudes with the attitudes to bring the heat. Get the point, yeah, it's on, time to lock in. Listen to the podcast, where they get it poppin'. Welcome to Two Dudes with Attitudes WWE edition with the Heartbreak Dude Denton and Ryan enjoys wrestling and we're back to talk about a interesting week of WWE. I'm sure we're going to dive into that. But first, how's life going Mr. Ryan over there? <laughs> how's the week treating you in wrestling yeah. and so on? It's it's going, man. It's going. It was a uh, it was a weird week in WWE. It was it was almost like Tony Khan and Triple H switched places and mm -hmm. switched companies because there was a lot of randomness in WWE and just a lot of a lot of off the wall stuff. So we'll we'll dive into for sure. Yeah. I definitely felt like an AEW nut hugger this week because I felt like I was just going at WWE with my TikToks and people were just really disagreeing with me, not understanding why I didn't understand what was happening yeah. on Raw. But we'll get into it. I was like, oh, I just don't get it. But we'll we'll, we'll dive into that. Are you ready? You want to jump into this? No news, right? Yeah, Let's no, it. no major news other than Shotzi's hurt, but we'll we'll talk more about that when we yeah. When we oh, get to it. poor Shotzi. I know she, she had her up her tank. Yeah, <laughs> she had her shot to lose an NXT title shot. All right, you ready? SmackDown. <laughs> Let's get into it. It seems Let's like so it. long ago, but here it is, sixty seconds or less. The SmackDown review. The show opens with Triple H, Nick Aldis, and Adam Pierce. Triple H says he's in charge, and certain people need to know their roles. And I'm assuming shut their mouths. The main event of Mania will be Roman versus Cody. In case you didn't get that the night before, or two nights over now, the night before at the press conference, there will be qualifying matches starting tonight, meaning on SmackDown, to determine who will be in the elimination chamber to see who will face Seth freaking Rollins. At WrestleMania, Drew McIntyre defeats AJ Styles in the first qualifying match. Pretty deadly say they will get revenge. Bianca Belair defeats Mitchin to qualify for the Elimination Chamber match. Braun Breaker asks Triple H for advice if he should go to Raw or SmackDown. And Paul Heyman tells Triple H that Roman Reigns will be here next week. And The Rock. Bailey cuts a promo on how much she loved damage control and how hurt she was when they were talking behind her back. Dakota Kai comes out and praises Bailey when the rest of Damage Control come out to attack Bailey, but Dakota Kai makes the save, kind of maybe she did. Pete Dunn and and uh, Tyler Bate defeat DIY to face the Judgment Day for the belts at Elimination Chamber. Dirty Dom is ready to win the chamber and have matching titles with Mommy. Logan Paul is upset about needing to qualify for the chamber because that's beneath him. And that he has to wrestle for free in Utah. Oh, although I felt like he was from Utah. At Mania, <laughs> he will be double champion, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. And in the main event, Randy Orton defeats Sami Zayn, who couldn't win a match if his life was on the line, to qualify for the chamber to end the show. And that's the way more than 60 second or less review on SmackDown. What do you think? What do you want to dive into? So much happened, right? I felt like SmackDown yeah. was better than Raw. Maybe I'm off with that, but I thought it was at least a little bit more. But it was also ran. I sent you a text just really quick before you jump in that I was like, "Oh my gosh, look at!" I took a picture of my TV and sent it to you, and I'm like, "These are the people that are like we obviously yeah. know who's gonna win and lose." And then the first four, they were like, "Nah, fam, not nah, Denton. We're gonna put the four top dudes in a match together to see who moves on because we do need some people to get beat up on in the elimination chamber, which makes sense. So gives me hope, Dirty Dom. But yes, what what you think? What's going on? Where do you want to start? Should we just talk chamber? So general? yeah, so I, I'll just talk about SmackDown in general. Then yeah, we can break down the chamber. But I thought this episode. Like you said, I thought it was better than Monday Night Raw, but I was still a little disappointed in this episode altogether because they and I almost went to SmackDown last week because it was in Charlotte, which is about a three hour drive for me. So I could have done it, mm. but I'm glad that I didn't because you had the you had the most hyped WrestleMania press event just less than 24 hours before. Mm -hmm. And this is what you followed up with was I mean, I didn't expect Roman to be on the show. I didn't expect The Rock to be on the show, but maybe you could have had the the. The, the golden boy, Cody Rhodes, 
He couldn't he couldn't come out and cut a promo based based yeah. on everything we, that was talked about during that whole thing. Um, Seth Rollins couldn't couldn't be bothered to make the trip over to North Carolina to cut a promo about the people in the elimination chamber qualifying matches. You know, again, once again, the highlight of this show was Bailey and Dakota Kai. And mm-hmm. I feel like they're stealing their, they've stolen the show now two weeks in a row. And I just feel like they're not they're not getting their their due from the WWE uh brass it, because mm-hmm. all the focus is on what's happening at WrestleMania that everyone's forgetting about what these two women, Bailey, Dakota Kai, and EO Sky and the rest of damage control are doing. That's probably the best storyline that's being told right now. I, I agree with you fully. And and I was like engaged in it because Dakota Kai really seemed like she was like truthful in everything that she said, although I think it's a swerve. It's a pivot. But yeah. I think that yeah, that's not the that, original plan. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it's Bailey the, decided yeah. last. Yeah, these damn <laughs> pivots. Um, but no, but I, I don't know because then when she got the chairs, she was pointing it at Bailey for quite a while. Like she made the save, but she was doing like the iffy face. And I know that makes it obvious, but uh, I don't know because I don't see Bailey losing at Mania, obviously. So if she does turn, then how does that work? But maybe she will and they'll. But then does it make sense that Dakota Kai and Bailey move on? That's like basically damage control minus EO Sky. What, what are they going to be? Are they going to be fresh? I don't know. I don't know. But nonetheless, I'm intrigued. I'm more intrigued by this than I am, which I'll talk to about in. Monday Night Raw, Seth Rollins title right now. So yeah. I am intrigued by it and, and wanting to see what's going to happen. And I like what they're doing too, because obviously with the Kabuki Warriors and, and EO Sky, they, their, their language is obviously not their biggest aspect, right? Because they're not from our country. Mm-hmm. So they were finding ways, just like with Shinsuke, to kind of get around that. And I like what WWE is doing, because I feel like unlike AEW where you can just throw all these Japanese wrestlers in without needing a story, a build or anything, just because they can do flips and stuff and people get into it. That's not how it works at WWE. And they try to have these wrestlers talk like an Asuka or, and I feel like it, downgrades them it makes people like them less i think that's what hurt oscar with her title runs and why shinsuke didn't win at mania just because yeah. it's it's you're just not it, you don't click and i think these are good ways i think shinsuke is clicking now i think oscar and the kubuka Warriors are clicking now because they're not talking so they're finding ways around it and that's i'm very intrigued by that and very smart on triple h because he wants these people to succeed because they're all talented and they deserve that it's not his fault he has you know ignorant fans who you know, only one America. So, but yeah, but I, I'm intrigued by it. I like what Bailey's doing and I'm, oof, I might shed a tear when she wins at mania. That's like what I'm, I'm telling you, I still think it should main event night one. I don't give a I shit. I agree with that. It's like night one. I think it needs yeah, to be I completely a night agree. one. I think if you're going to do a whole bunch of hooplas with Roman and this and that or Seth or this, I think it all needs to be on night two. Just have them all that night. Then you see go back to back two. and yeah, hell yeah, or open or cl- I think it all needs to be because night two always suffers. So, and night one's always the banger, but we need, we need Bailey in there just like it should have been Rhea and Charlotte last year. So, yeah, no, I completely agree. And yes, yeah, Bailey, Bailey was the star of this show. Dakota Kai is an interesting little nugget. I could see them. I could see them having a match at elimination chamber. Maybe they announce something tomorrow on SmackDown where it's Bailey and Dakota Kai against the Kabuki warriors for the women's tag Maybe. team championships. And then EO sky, cost them or Dakota Kai turns or something mm-hmm. along those lines. And then Bailey's truly on her own. So I could see something that, along yeah. those lines happening. So that would be when you need the Dakota Kai turn, but I don't know if Dakota Kai's ready yet. She still wears that. Damn she is, knee, but she's been wearing she's that from, knee brace for like six years. I don't know. She's from New Zealand, which is like four inches away uh-huh. on the map from Australia. So yeah, I mean, she would probably get that big pop and then that bi- a lot of booze yeah. from the, the, the Australian crowd in elimination chamber, if, if they were to do it that way. So yeah. Four inches. Yeah. That's really far away. <laughs> <laughs> right, ladies? All right. Anyway, but so like, I had to. Don't set me up, bro. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean that's close? Yeah. That's like this far away. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but let's let's talk about the Elimination Chamber. So we have 12 men, right, who are all trying to qualify, correct? The six go in. I always thought it was five. I don't know. One, two three, four. Oh yeah. Four and two starts. So six. That's right. I'm just yeah. not that intelligent with math. Um, but so we had drew and AJ and then we close with, um, Sammy and, uh, and Randy, Randy Orton. Orton. Mm-hmm. I thought it was uh, okay. So I, I like that. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I do. I am intrigued by Sammy Zayn because I think he's kind of lost in the shuffle. What better way to get somebody loved again by, making them feel alone and making them feel like a loser, right? You got to, you got to build yourself. You want that like 
that Rocky story, right? So I'm okay with them doing this with Sammy right now. Have him lose a few, have him sit around and arenas empty and feel like, oh, I'm so lonely and people wanting, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm okay with him. And we'll talk more about that on Raw, obviously, because he wrestles again. But, but I, I mean, Ray, they, they felt not obvious, but they felt obvious, right? Like I kind of want, I want some chamber qualifyings where I'm not sure. Like Bianca and Mitchin, like, I really thought Mitchin was going to win that one. I was kind of yeah. thinking about it, but then I was like, eh. Was and I, yeah. yeah, and they gave us, like, Drew and AJ, but at the same time, like, maybe AJ Sammy would have felt better. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. And they may have one of them go. And I, you need at least a couple qualifiers where you're kind of iffy about it. Like, maybe we're iffy about Dirty Dom and KO because I do feel like, Logan Paul and K are both going to lose and they're going to wrestle at Elimination Chambers. So I think it's going to be Miz and Dirty Dom moving on. I think they're both going to cost each other their matches. I think that's where we're going with it. I think it's the only obvious sense. There's no point to have KO and Logan Paul in an Elimination Chamber match. It's literally point. They're they're not they're not going to face that mania unless they really are getting rid of LA Knight. I don't know. But if they aren't and it's still LA Knight, then you kind of need Yeah. Right? Am I missing? But like Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre like obviously they were going to win. But we'll also talk about where this gets lost on Raw. But, I mean, did you like to qualify matches? Did you think AJ had a chance to beat? Did you think Sammy was going to beat Randy Orton? Like, Orton wasn't going to was be just, in the elimination I was chamber. surprised uh, at some of these matchups. I mean, you had Drew McIntyre versus AJ Styles in the first mm -hmm. round. You know, I figured if a AJ just competed for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble, and now he's having to wrestle probably the hottest guy on the roster mm -hmm. right now and Drew McIntyre. So I thought the matchups seemed a little, I, it, I thought for sure. Why is AJ not in it? Yeah, like, I thought for sure AJ Styles would wrestle, he would be the one to wrestle Dirty Dom, or he would be the mm -hmm. one to wrestle The Miz or somebody along those lines. And then, um, yeah, like it's just weird that he's not going to be in it. Randy Orton's in it. Drew McIntyre's in it. Uh, yeah, so, but also, what is it? I'm not a fan of these matches going on because, you know, what about the brand split and everything like that? Why are people from SmackDown competing mm -hmm. for a Raw title? And I understand it's because Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble and he's a Raw guy and he's challenging Smack the SmackDown guy and Roman Reigns. And I, I get that. So they got to have they got to have some intrigue. Some SmackDown people have to have something to fight for. But it just again, why do we have this brand split? Why do we have Nick Aldis and and Adam Pierce? beefing every other week and then friday they magically all come together to come up mm -hmm. with a great way to get the uh, the elimination chamber qualifying matches and they're all working together now and i don't know it just all of it just felt weird it felt random and yeah i'm not a big fan of some of these i'm just not a fan of these matches where people are competing for a raw champ a raw championship on smackdown and Once, yeah. smackdown guys are coming to raw to compete it's just yeah i'm just kind of like what's the point of the brand split then and then what happens, right? So if you're the SmackDown going for Seth, do you become a Raw member? Or if you lose, you just stay on SmackDown. So if you win, you become Raw. If you lose, yeah. then like, and Nick Aldis and them are yeah, and are they good with this? You're just allowed to like lose wrestlers. I feel like you're you're like paying for these guys, right? Technically, wink wink. So I don't know. Yeah. I did I did like Nick Aldis and Adam Pierce together though, and not for the fact that I do get what you're saying. They're enemies now, they're like besties, but I did like the fact that I feel like it's Nick Aldis is making Adam Pierce better. Like when they were together throughout SmackDown and Raw or whatever, I felt like Adam Pierce got like tougher and got big. Like we forget Adam Pierce was a wrestler too. He's a big yeah, dude. He's good. Like, like I, I felt like he has gotten better. He, like he's no nonsense now. I don't like his like drinking lines. And that's coming from me, who's a huge drinker. I just I, I don't I don't know if I'm missing it, but every time after he gets frustrated, he's like, "Oh, I need a drink." That's like his mm -hmm. go-to line, and I'm kind of thinking, like, "Are we going somewhere with this? Are we just promoting to the children that it's okay that when you're frustrated, <laughs> daddy's gonna go have so, a drink?" Yeah. Like, I, I don't like, and hopefully he doesn't get angry. Like, I don't I, I I'm I'm missing. I don't like that, but I do like that he is getting more forceful, bigger, and I think Nick Aldis has helped him because I think once Nick Aldis came in, it has been phenomenal that Adam Pierce was like, "Shit, I gotta like." Yeah, get it up. So I think it was nice to see them together because Adam Pierce has gotten better. I believe I like these and, GMs. And we'll and get then, into yeah, not liking GMs soon, but yeah, yeah, I like the GMs, and I I do like this. One thing that really kind of bugged me was the the announce the Triple H cutting his promo, and the ring announcer introduced him as Paul Triple H Levesque. Like, let's not yeah, do that anymore. Is, yeah, let's just call him. We know him as Triple H. Just call him Triple H, not yeah. Paul Triple H Levesque. That was weird, but also. Is this leading to 
you know, people are saying it's going to lead to Triple H coming out of retirement to wrestle The Rock because he was throwing. <sighs> but he's got he's literally has a pacemaker in his heart, and I don't think yeah, he's, I don't I don't think he's gonna gonna be able to do that. But I could see somebody like Nick Aldis stepping up in his place because he's been giving. Roman Reigns a lot of grief and mm -hmm. Roman Reigns even did a TikTok video I think where he was just like I don't like this Nick Aldis guy and that's all he said he's like I don't like him yeah and so maybe it's leading to Nick Aldis coming back into the ring because I you know he's only like 35 years old so he's still in the prime yeah. of his life so who knows but I, I am I am intrigued with where this whole thing is going with Triple H The Rock Roman Reigns and Smackdown tomorrow night is going to be must watch TV well, yeah, that SmackDown is freaking built like a yeah. like a pay per view right now. Um, I'm a little. I, I thought we were gonna get like the whole like there's a McMahon in every like corner like type of thing. Like that's where I thought this was going. That like Triple H and The Rock are gonna be Triple H will be with Cody and The Rock will be with Roman and they're gonna yeah. be like I oughta and then Triple H will like clock him once and everyone will be like yeah and that'll help like Cody win or something stupid like that. But then let's get into Raw. Because then my mind changed a little bit. So you want to get into some Monday Night yeah, Raw? Let's just get it. into it. Because I feel like everything else we want to talk about with Chamber and yeah, it's all Triple H related. and so on. It's all Raw related. Obviously, it's the main show. So let's get into a 60 seconds or more recap of Monday Night <laughs> Raw. The show opens with a six-man tag match where Jey Uso and the new day right? defeat Imperium. Andrade loves wrestling, and he's glad he's back. But up, but up, but Bobby Lashley defeats Bronson Reed to qualify for the Chamber. Sami Zayn is sitting in an AEW stand during an episode of Dynamite, <laughs> cutting a promo Hi when Nakamura what what Nakamura pops on the Titan Tron, and they will face later on tonight, but not on AEW. They're gonna go and face Raw. Uh, let's get this going. Cody Rhodes is out for a promo and he calls out The Rock for the Cody Crybaby line. He even calls out Pac McAfee because he wants to know where the damn nuggets go, even though The Rock made it perfectly clear where they yeah. go. Seth mm -hmm. Rollins comes out and he completely forgets he's a champion, so he decides he will help Cody beat Roman and make a new shield. Uh, Alpha, Data, Bacon. Jay Uso gets an IC title shot next week. I guess, whatever that means. That's weird. I don't know why they're wasting that on a Raw. Our truth is kicked out of the Judgment Day again. And yeah. McDonough defeats him. So is he out? I don't know. DIY saves truth from a Judgment Day beatdown. Because if there's anybody who should help truth defeat the Judgment Day, it's a tag team that just lost their chances at them at Chamber. Where the heck were Dunn and Bay? Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. All yeah. right. Oh, man. Naya. <laughs> Becky Lynch cuts an amazing promo when Nia Jax cuts her off to praise her as a mother. And then they fight. Drew McIntyre tells Cody to not face him next week or he'll end up like punk and miss Mania. Great promo, but why the fudge are they wrestling next week? Our truth thinks DIY is DX. Funny. LA Knight defeats Ivar. He gets a he gets a gimme. To qualify for the chamber, Drew threatens Sammy, and Chelsea Green is not happy. In the main event, Nakamura gets his first win since 2011 by defeating Sammy Zayn. Drew and Nakamura beat him down when Cody makes the set. The fudge is going. And that closes the show of Monday Night Random. Raw. Raw Monday night. <laughs> and raw, this raw, episode, raw. people. So I watch this obviously a day late. I usually do because I'm not staying up from 8 to 11 and watch Monday Night Raw. So I watch it the next day, but I had saw people like praising it. I didn't get spoilers. I never do, but I got everybody like, Raw was great. Oh my gosh, Seth Rollins caught the greatest promo ever. Oh, this and that. And Cody's on fire. And then I watched it and I was like, what the? I, I thought maybe yeah. I was watching a different Monday Night Raw. Maybe my stream came in differently. I put posts about it and I had people trying to argue with me on why Seth is doing what he's doing and how it's the right choice for me. Uh, okay. I know we usually start with you, but let me just throw it out here. Go right? for it, man. Let me yeah. just, let me just throw it out here. Seth Rollins is a champion who begged the WrestleMania challenger to face him. He begged him. Okay. That never has happened in the hit. What champion begs anybody to face anybody. Then he was ridiculed and made fun of at a press conference literally being told and the smackdown before that his belt was worthless 
it's only people that have he, everyone Roman is beaten is fighting for that wimpy title. Da, 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 da. Then at the press conference, he got ignored. People made fun of him. Even Adam Pierce made fun of him, or not Adam Pierce, Pat McAfee even made fun of him, saying that I don't know why he's here. He literally was forgotten, made fun of. Then his way of coming back is that hey, we're gonna have some elimination chamber matches where these people are gonna face off to see who will get Seth freaking Rollins at Mania. So what does Seth do? Completely ignores it. I don't even know if he had his belt on. What was the point? And came out and literally got on his knees and gave Cody Rhodes a blowjob i have no idea what the hell is how anybody in their right mind thought man that was like some powerful shit from seth i like the way that he completely doesn't care about his title it's a joke we need some cody Rhodes help with with seth raw i'm am i missing something like why i get that he had a passionate promo and that's why people like santi and other people were digging it sure but he cut a passionate promo like three four weeks ago that was better than this like i, yeah. I get I get that he wasn't joking and stuff, but also Cody Rhodes, is he literally the new John Cena? Like stupid, cheesy lines. Where, where do I put that nugget? <laughs> hey, Pat, where do I put that nugget? Huh? Yeah. Uh, like this is the guy that people were hashtagging to face Roman. Yeah. Like this is, this is where we went from the rock bitch slapping Cody Rhodes that made national media news to this. And people are telling me that this shit was fire. Get out of my face with that. Your no. turn. Go yeah. ahead. I mean, I just, I am lost. I, I feel like I don't know wrestling anymore. Like, I, I don't com- understand. I completely agree with you. And I said last week, I said last week when we did highs and lows, I said one of my lows was the build to the elimination chamber. And I even mm-hmm. made a TikTok video about it yesterday saying that I think the build to the chamber has been complete hot garbage. And a lot of it's because Seth Rollins doesn't even care about who's going on what's going on in the elimination chamber. In his nope. promo, his passionate promo, he cares more about what Cody Rhodes is doing against the tribal chief Roman Reigns. Uh-huh. And and he's not he doesn't care what that, you know, LA Knight and Bobby Lashley and Randy Orton and, and, Drew, and McIntyre. Drew McIntyre, yeah, are competing for his championship. And he's he's also not doing the title any favors. He hasn't when he came out at the WrestleMania press event, the first thing he said was, oh, the, that sounds like a great pop. And then last week yeah. on Raw, he, he mentioned the pop again. It feels like he cares more about the, the pop and the crowd mm-hmm. noise and them singing his song and not about what Roman said about his title. Because he hasn't said a word about his championship the last two weeks about when Roman has dogged it, calling it the consolation prize and the loser's bracket. He hasn't said mm-hmm. a word about how... Make he's basically made his title irrelevant by not by a begging Cody Rhodes to fight him and b not saying anything to to defend mm-hmm. his case to say you know Roman you may have beaten everybody that's competed for this title but guess what I beat you motherfucker or something like yeah. that because yeah like he, he does have technically have a oh, single full victory. Samuel Jackson yeah. on him I like it yeah I like because he does <laughs> technically have a victory over over Roman Reigns at the Royal yeah. Rumble from twenty two mm-hmm. he was like a, a he got choked out but it still counts as a win. You know, yeah. like play into that. And I think that would bring your belt some prestige right there, or at least mm-hmm. bring you some credibility. But I don't know. That everyone's looking ahead to WrestleMania. The press event took place before the before we even knew what was happening mm-hmm. at the elimination chamber. Becky Lynch is so concerned about Rhea Ripley that mm-hmm. she has to, in order to face Rhea Ripley, she has to win the elimination chamber. It just feels like everybody, Co- Seth Rollins is focused on what Cody Rhodes is doing and says that he'll give him some assistance and he'll he'll be his shield instead of worrying about who's in the freaking elimination chamber. It's just, yeah. it feels like everybody's looking ahead and nobody really cares about the elimination chamber. But not only that, but why the hell would Seth, why does he want to help Cody? Where's the story? On that, like we're talking about AEW not having story. Yeah, where where the heck is the story? Where did this, this is come from? Seth Why? Rollins is the like same the young guy. Bucks all of a sudden hating Sting. Like what the? Where did this come from? He's like, a model employee. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah. But yeah. why? Like I don't like Seth. All of a sudden is now is just like I just we gotta take down the tribal chief. So I got you. I mean, I mean, unless it's a swerve, but nonetheless, like why is it even? why he's the champion he's not like he has he has stuff to do (laughs) like i don't like why there's so many people who can help cody so many people yeah triple h is one nick aldis is like they they what the hell Sami Zayn doing like you have people who can literally la Knight. you can have people help him why do we have these people that got screwed by roman la Knight, Sami Zayn, jay uso why not jay uso shoot yeah right like we have people who could why do we have (laughs) 
I do not get this. I am. I and you can't talk me otherwise. I, you can't. No, the, this is this was no bad. one can talk me into that. This, yeah. this was probably everyone. Like you said, everyone was talking about what a great promo this was, and uh, this is the same guy. Why Seth Rollins literally attacked Cody Rhodes when he had a yeah. torn pec and wrote huh? he wrote him off of TV the night huh? after uh, Hell in a Cell a few years ago. Be, and he, when he was a monster heel and Seth mm-hmm. Rollins is the guy that turned his back on Roman Reigns. So why, why now is Seth Rollins all over Cody Rhodes? Oh, we can fight him together. Why? Yeah. Why? why? I, I sense. don't know why. Yeah. And, and, and what did, what did Roman do to Seth? Once again, where is the story? He clowned like, his championship. Is, so now he, now he's now his goal is to conquer him. Like, where did that come from too? It's not like Seth's been screwed by Roman anytime. So like, what, what is yeah. happening? I don't like this at all. I, I don't like it about at all. Pivot. This is. And I, I hate. This is why I hate that CM Punk got hurt. Because I feel like him and Seth Rollins could have had some fire moments together. Some great promo battles. Some great stuff. Mm-hmm. And now it's like we don't have a thing for Seth Rollins to do. He's hurt. He also can't defend mm-hmm. his championship at Elimination Chamber. So let's just put some randos in an Elimination Chamber match. And to see who mm-hmm. fights him at WrestleMania. But let's have Seth involved with this Cody Rhodes mm-hmm. that, I don't get if, it. If, if he if he can even get there, maybe he's going to get injured before wink wink before the ch- I, maybe that's there what was ever doing. a time for Damian Priest to cash in. It's now. <laughs> well, what the uh, let's yeah. not even talk about that. Um, but you want to talk about a good promo? Let's talk about the person who wears the pants in that family, and that's one Becky Lynch. This chick, for one, is stunning. Unlike Seth Rollins, they even though she wears her clothes, she comes <laughs> out and she cuts an amazing promo about missing her father's funeral and missing important dates with her with her daughter and explaining to her daughter why like she comes home with bruises or why her dad wants to beat up Maui from Moana like what a great freaking line like why does daddy want to beat up Mo- Maui like she cut a passionate phenomenal promo what and what is she doing hyping herself up for the elimination chamber ding 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 and wanting to get there. Plus, we have Liv Morgan doing the same thing. Plus, with Liv, tour. by the way, who came back, holy shit, she was sexy. But damn, she got like sex. I don't know, just because you, you miss someone, then you see him again. You love someone, Jesus. you set them free. Man. Liv Morgan, call <laughs> me up, girl. Hit me up with the DMs if you're single, baby. You are. Woo! Anyway, and anyway, get, get back. I, I'll smoke weed. Anyway, but let's get back. So, doesn't she do that? Or uh, no, she just sells it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's get back to it. So, but then Nia Jax cuts off Becky Lynch, right? Cuts off Becky Lynch, and what does she do? She talks about how, no, she's going to beat Rhea at the... Well, actually, she cuts a pretty hysterical. I thought that was good, too. How over-the-top she was about, like, you're such a good mother. I wish I had a mom like you. It was, like, so good because she was, like, obviously doing it to be cheeseball, wasn't trying, and it was good stuff. But now you don't know. Like, is Rhea even going to make it to Mania? Is Nia going to defeat her? Who's going to win at Chamber? Is it going to be Liv? Is it going to be... Becky Lynch, is it going to be a three-way? Which, yes, please. I have no idea what's going to happen, but how are we hitting it so right with the women on Elimination Chamber and the build to the title that didn't get called out, and we're not with the men? And that's where I'm a little lost right now. I'm okay with it because I want the women to shine, but what the heck happened to the men? I, I don't know, but Becky Lynch took over. The, the promo was better. It had importance. She didn't come out and say, hey, EO Sky, I'm going to help you beat Bailey later on, so we're going to build yeah. a we're, we're going to build some damage and we're going to defeat like she literally focused on what she needs to do, winning the title, going for it. Great stuff. Great stuff from all around. You didn't even need Rhea there. I mean, it was just like a a great, great thing. And then Liv winning later on, you know what I mean? Just cemented yeah. that. Now I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued with everything with the women. What the hell we're doing with damage control? Who's going to face Rhea? Is is Nia Jax going to have a good showing against Rhea? I mean, I, it's obviously Rhea's going to win, but it's like there's just so much intrigue of what's going to happen. I'm very, very invested. Or or are we going to get a four-way? I mean, are we going to find a way to get yeah. all four? And I'm down with that, too. You can sign and me there's up a, a main event. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's also a last chance battle royal taking place next week on Raw. That, that's, that's what why Chelsea, Chelsea was mad about. Yeah. yeah, that's why she was so mad. So I could see I could see somebody else getting an opportunity in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the women the women are, are smoking right now. And I mean, mm-hmm. no pun intended with Liv Morgan. But they're, they are... They're on, they're, they're blazing right now. They're on fire. Oh, I don't got. know what else to say. Um, <laughs> All right. But, All right. NBA jam. Yeah. They're super high right now, but um, they're, they're super high. 
but no, they're all like the women are the women are doing their damn thing on Monday mm-hmm. Night Raw and and on SmackDown, and they're stealing mm-hmm. the show. But everything Becky Lynch said was great. Um, you know, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued with what they're doing, but I'm more intrigued with this than I am with what, like you said, with Cody and Seth. I'm I'm more intrigued with The Rock and Roman Reigns coming to SmackDown than I am with mm-hmm. what Cody and Seth are doing, and they're involved in yeah. the damn storyline. It, I just I just don't get it. Well, let's talk about more confusion. Hit me up about the main event. What happened there, right? Like, yeah. what the heck's going on? We got Nakamura versus Zayn, right? In a non qualify it's just a match for funsies, main yeah. eventing. Which Nakamura whole... wins. Yeah. Huh? Dude hasn't yeah. won in literally since 2011, since he won the Royal Rumble. And we get Cody making the save, Drew beating up Sammy. What is what, what's happening? I don't understand what what's going on is like, this... help me, help me help you. Yeah. I, ca- I can't figure this out. I can't figure this out at all. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, because why is, is Cody Rhodes? Is he staying on Monday night raw? Why is, why is Drew McIntyre beating up Cody Rhodes and, and fighting Sammy? It looks like he's more feuding with, Sammy than he is Cody, but why is Cody involved with Drew McIntyre when Drew McIntyre is in the elimination chamber to go after Seth's title? But Seth is trying to help Cody. It, mm-hmm. yeah, I can't, I can't figure this out. It's like a puzzle that I don't want to put together. It just makes no sense. And That's I like puzzle. what they're, I like what they're doing with Sami Zayn, with him, you know, getting the sympathy vote and mm-hmm. getting everyone to feel sorry for him. And he, he's fine. He just keeps mm-hmm. finding ways to lose matches and. It makes mm-hmm. me wonder if they're turning him heel in the future, and that's when that's what's going to snap his uh, snap him back into reality and snap him back into winning. So Sami Zayn's always been better as a heel anyway, so I wouldn't be opposed to that. They're kind of babyface heavy at the moment, mm-hmm. but this ending just made no sense to me. And again, where where Seth Rollins literally cut a promo saying, "I'll protect you, I'll help you, I'll be your shield." And doesn't even come out to help Cody Rhodes. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> but me- also. Also, why does Drew care about Sammy? He's not even in the Elimination Chamber match. Yeah. He, he didn't qualify. So why are they feuding? Second, why does Cody care about Sammy? Why is he Drew and Cody wrestling? That that better be yeah. a no contest. Neither of those men can take an L right. Like, what the hell are we doing, WWE? I'm so Monday Night Raw confused the bananas out of me. Yeah. It was literally yeah. like watching an episode of Dynamite. I had no idea what was happening. I was like, we're just putting matches on together. I mean, minus the women. I mean, I'm... I'm lost. I was like, definitely. I don't know how people were so praising it. I, I don't. I was confused it was by that. All over. None the of place. it made and, sense. Yeah. And then you know, Judgment Day beating up our Truth, and then DIY huh? coming to the rescue, and not Butch or Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne who yeah. were in the match against the Judgment Day at elimination. Who just beat Chamber. DIY. Yeah. Why yeah. didn't? Why not have DIY win then? I'm so confused. Yeah. Makes no. I don't get it. I don't <sighs> understand it at all. And. Mm-hmm. um yeah, I mean, I'm glad that hopefully this means the end of our truth and Judgment Day because they need mm. to get back to being more, you know, a serious faction. Mm. Even the whole JD McDonough is not in the Judgment Day; he isn't. Like, stop doing that. Mm-hmm. Like, he's in, mm-hmm. and get get Rhea Ripley and Dom Dom back together. Like, let's have more interactions with them. Let's make them a more serious group, a a, a mm-hmm. faction that we can take seriously. Because right now, they're just they're kind of a joke, and it's because of our truth. And I love our truth. I hate saying that about our yeah. truth, but. But yeah, it's time for them good, to yeah. time to take them seriously. I agree. I agree. All right, WWE, get it together on SmackDown, please. Let's start making some sense because this shit's all over the place. I, we can't have everybody. Yeah. I know we have eight weeks or seven weeks, sorry, until Mania, but still, you need to start building. We need to not. Yeah, have we have it. we have no direction. Yeah. Unless this is all going somewhere, but once again, what does it matter? Why is Seth going to be anywhere near Cody? They're both champions. They need to be on opposite side. I don't understand. And there's no yeah. point Cody should be feuding but, with people who are going to be feuding with Seth. This is stupid. Yeah. There's, there's, like I said, there's no direction, even for like Gunther, mm-hmm. you know, Gu- Gunther versus Jey Uso next week on Raw. Great. Yeah. But who's not Chamber? What the yeah, heck? Because I, I think it's because he can't travel. He can't leave the US. So he, they have to do it on, on Raw. Uh, um, and I don't know if Jey Uso can leave. I don't, I don't know. He's left. The yeah. US maybe not still. Yeah. But, I don't. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, but, but again, what's, what's next for Gunther after that? And then mm-hmm. what about Seth and, at Mania? And what about Cody at Mania? Like, let's, I know we get Cody versus Roman, but I don't know. I just feel like there's no real direction right now to mm-hmm. WrestleMania. It just feels like a bunch of randomness. Yeah, and we just need one direction. All right, you ready? Hey, yo, that's what <laughs> makes you beautiful. All right, NXT recap. You want to talk about a confusing mess? 
every time I praise the goat, he shuts me down by booking a hot. I didn't even put everything in this recap because there was so much random pointlessness that I didn't even include it. But if you're ready, 60 second or less recap. Let's, yeah, let's go. See. The show opens. Yeah. The show opens with Noem Dar and crew, the metaphor beating Von Wagner and Mr. Stone, who was pretty damn jacked. Chase, you was back, baby. They think JC Jane. JC makes deals and pays the debt after they got their stuff back already. What the fuck? What creditor gives their stuff back and then takes the money? Anyway, and they share JC again. JC. J Rich Holland defeats Gallus by DQ. Then Rich literally defeats Gallus, destroys them, and then sits in the corner wondering what he did. Lexus King mocks Stone's kids, and Stone ain't having it. Gulak says he'll win the Heritage Cup at some point. Who cares? Lola Vice defeats Tatum Paxley, the same girl who just beat Roxanne Perez a week ago and Lola Vice lost. Now they're winning and Shotzi will face Lyra next week, but she ain't ladies and gentlemen. Spoiler Parker alert. defeats yeah. yeah, Parker defeats Rizzo. Okay, cool. Nice debut. Dijak is losing his mind. Braun and Corbin are ready for the titles and Braun wants Corbin to call them the Wolf Dogs and whatever reason Baron Corbin's against that super cool name. I don't get it. Carmelo Hayes defeats Joe Gacy and the why the hell is this match happening when Dijax attacks Joe Gacy after the match, then puts him in a freaking straight jacket, and then Gacy laughs, and we cut the commercial. Roxanne Perez is angry, and she slaps Ren across the face. Obafemi cuts a promo, and he's, I guess, a baby face again. I thought he was a heel. I have no idea what the hell's going on. But Alexis King cuts him off, and they will fight next week. Kiana James wins a match in three minutes. And in the main event, the Wolf Dogs, and the only thing that made sense, defeats Tony D and Starks to win the tag titles, and they celebrate their mother effing butts off. And that's the 60-second or less NXT recap with everything else that I skipped out because there was just too much stupid stuff going on. What the hell happened on this episode? You said I, that, I'm telling you, I feel like an AEW nut hugger this week. This shit was yeah. a hot mess. Yeah, you said that the Wolf Dogs winning made sense, and I agree, but I also disagree because what about Braun? Braun, like, Braun Breaker is going. Braun to Breaker, Raw, he's yeah. on SmackDown and Raw. Like he had, he Yay. asked Triple H, which brand should I sign with? And Triple what? H was like, "Follow your gut, go with your heart." You know, he gave him the, you know, you choose what's best for you, and, and then he goes and wins the NXT Tag Team Championship. So. Like, is he not going to Raw? Is he not going to SmackDown? Two different universes. We've yeah, talked about this. I know. A but a person. That's but not does the same. It, I know. <laughs> I know. I, I hear you, man. I get it. But it just it doesn't make any sense. And, like, will he be on Raw? Will he be on SmackDown tomorrow holding the tag team championships? Or will will he conveniently not no, have them? I mean, yeah. yeah no. So it's just like, then what's the point of having them win? Like, I, yeah. I, I like Braun. I like the Wolf Dogs. But and I'm I'm happy that they got the win. I think well, they Baron Corbin it. got a title. He hasn't had one yeah. since Nakamura won a match. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, I I love Baron Corbin and he's doing the best work of his career in NXT and I'm happy for him. But I just don't understand if Bear if Braun Breaker's going to the main roster, why did you have them win the tag titles? I mean, mm -hmm. Shawn Michaels is a better man than I am. He's be, he's smarter than I am when it comes mm -hmm. to this stuff. He probably has a plan. Maybe they drop him at stand and deliver. Maybe Baron Corbin turns on Braun or something and. Um, I'm seeing that, yeah. But but at the same time, I mean, I'm, I am happy for them, and they deserve it. So yeah, um, it was a good way to end what was a catastrophic a a uh, AEW NXT event. It Basically, felt like AEW. Um, it did. I mean, but, you want to talk about you want to follow up the hottest thing going on in NXT maybe ever, where Carmelo Hayes was booed more than Cody Rhodes got chanted about yeah. being robbed by The Rock, and how do you follow that shit up? By having no mention of Trick Williams and having him wrestle Joe Gacy da, 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 in like a 20 minute match. And is Joe Gacy still in the schism? He comes out to the same music and the masks are on the screen when he comes out. What's happening? Yeah, I don't. I don't... Is he a schism? <laughs> but what was that about? And why was he put in a straight jacket? Is that Dijex? I guess. I guess or his how, college, what? His calling card or what? I don't. Where did he get it? I don't. That was all of it was. Huh? And Camelo yeah. Hayes had a cheat basically to win. You need yeah. like help from Dijak. Like, what is happening? Yeah. What I is I don't get I don't understand. And Carmelo Hayes is feuding now with Dragonov, but Dijak is the one that like Dijak's also feuding with Dragonov, and but he's still Trick feuding with Williams Joe Gacy. Is feuding yeah. with Dragonov. It but, makes yeah. no yeah. It NXT's all over the place, man. It was it was <laughs> all over the place this week. Ooh. And then Ridge Holland is you know, winning matches, but he's also like conflicted about the person that he's becoming or that he is. He's he's looking at his inner self. Uh, I don't I don't know what that's what he was doing. doing. 
That's what he was I doing. Guess. I don't know. Question and, I, I, <laughs> and I love the fact that Chase, you got all their stuff back and were so happy. And then the chick was like, here's your payment. Like who? I cannot imagine like you getting your house foreclosed. And then they're like, he's like, no, I'm going to pay you on Wednesday. And they're like, all right, here's, here's the your keys. house. You go yeah. enjoy that house back. <laughs> like, and here's the money afterwards. Like what in the, fu we couldn't do that. And what was the thing afterwards? Like why even bring up like, they knew they weren't going to win in the main event. So why bring that up? Is that getting like, she was like, and we want a title shot. When, if you guys win the match in the main event, eh? it's scripted y'all, yeah. you know, they ain't going to win. So why even bring, I, I don't know. This was a NXT was a huge miss. I was like watching this. Like I was also, they have all these new people come, you know what WWE does really well. And I've bragged about this is that when AEW gets people an edge, a whoever, a Sasha Banks, they don't, tell you who they are they just appear and tony khan assumes you know who the heck they are here comes and he comes out and i'm just supposed to know who he is because he wrestled in new japan wrestling once and i'm supposed to like care that he's wrestling you know this person and that person and blah 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 i, I don't know who these people are so you have in wwe it doesn't matter who you are randy orton returns they're gonna cut you a five minute promo of who randy orton is even though you know who the hell randy orton is that's what wwe does so well why the hell is NXT AEW where they're just having people like this, uh, the, this, what Parker girl come, she's like this huge new prospect. There's this young, young kid, like this 19 year old, like they're not even like, where's yeah. the hype video? Where's the, why am I supposed to know who these people are? Like NXT once again, fans, not everybody's on the internet. I get that. They had like the whole, we want Cody movement. Cause 40 people online were upset. I, they pivoted explain they pivoted. explain yeah, yeah they pivot that you need to explain to me what the heck's going on like stop being aew like i get aew thinks you know everybody but we don't so like and even if i do yeah. get me hyped up because i guarantee you if i was having my son watch he has no idea who these people are or why he should care so you should get invested in new people new fans get people involved i just thought there was a lot of things going on and i had no idea what the hell was going on that's how i felt i was watching this i was like who's this like i don't know this yeah person. like wh why do i it, like yeah, I mean, and they You'll look great. At all. Yeah, they look fantastic. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but at but... the same time, I'm like, I have no idea. Like, why should I care that this person mm -hmm. is on is on my screen right now? So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, what about the uh, this vignette that's playing of the three faces and whoever? Who do you who do you any ideas who it is? There's rumors that it's Okada, but. Now there's rumors that Okada is going to AEW. So I literally was gonna say I, it's Okada, and I hope it's Okada. And I hope he shows up with a Chase U shirt on. I hope. Oh, that would be awesome. My mind. He's the I want <laughs> the X to just blow up and explode. I want it to be okay. Who do I think it is? I have no idea. It's probably some gymnast. But I really, really, really hope it's Okada. Like I'm, and I hope they brought Chase U back just to put Okada in Chase U. Because I do think Triple H reads the internet, and that was the whole thing. Like, why is Okada going to go to NXT? Is he joining Chase U? And is like Okada like in a Chase U shirt? I really, I'm like just yeah. hoping he just takes that would it. Be awesome. I hope that's what everybody's saying now, right? They only took uh, Jade Cargill so they can ruin her. That was the shove it in AEW's face. I'm like, gosh, you guys are idiots. So I just want them to like half fake it, although I know they won't. But in, in general, why not? Why can't it be Okada? Yeah, why not? I hope yeah. it is. Oh, because Sean Ross Sapp said that he wasn't going there because Sean Ross Sapp is like, you know, a notch better than Dave freaking Meltzer. Like, yeah. once again, I still want to slap that dude. Anyway, but Sean Ross, yeah, he's a clown. Yeah. I can see are, it. But yeah. You know, the one person that, that we haven't heard a lot of, a lot from, Bo Dallas. And, you know, that's kind of like mm. a Bray Wyatt type promo thing that they're playing. And so who knows? Or it's probably somebody that's just getting a gimmick change and, you know, it's probably Trick Williams probably. or something. You know, it's like yeah, I'm not. Yeah, that <laughs> Trick Williams. He's getting a new gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't think it's Okada. I'm just saying, I really yeah. hope it is. I just think it would be hilarious if it was Okada. Like just yeah. so funny. But it feels like a, yeah, like a Japanese type promo, right? Too. Because yeah. it's like the typing, the wordage. The, it's very like mm. yeah, like that's what I'm saying, and that's how they need to promote Japanese wrestlers in WWE because the fans are ignorant and won't just enjoy them they have to you know have the talking and the promos and that's the best way to do it nakamura and kabuki warriors you sky they're getting done right with how they're being be treated now yeah, so for sure i'm all for it man i'm all for it yeah, let's go I'll be for it yeah, i would it think it's, but if not you're probably right it's probably trick win bo dallas i mean if they brought <laughs> bo dallas, he's like the yeah. he's like the longest reigning nxt champion of all time if he had to come back to nxt that's pretty sad but 
He's a. Uh, uh, you were talking about Liv Morgan being single. He's actually dating Liv Morgan. Bo Dallas. Yeah. Bo Dallas has Liv Morgan. You, you better believe it. Yes, sir. He is. He's got. That's. He, yeah. She's in a relationship right now with Bo Dallas. She used to be in a relationship with Enzo Amore, and now and she up. I guess she upgraded to to Bo Leave. And people yeah. think us fans don't have chances with these hot wrestling oh, stuff. Yeah. I am 100% hotter than both those dudes <laughs> combined. If I live Morgan girl, call me up. I'll give you something to Bo <laughs> leave in girl. You don't. Yeah. I get that. And that's no diss on Bo Dallas. Bless your soul, my man, yeah. but you are ugly. You ain't me, bro. Let's. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? How's Kathy mm-hmm. Kelly not hitting me up? This girl just posted about how she's like, Oh, I had to buy myself flowers on Valentine's day because I'm alone. Girl. I will stop yeah, with that. I Kathy would... Kelly. Yeah, I will do whatever you, you want, on. and but and I'm a normal, sane person. I'm not even no creeping weirdo, girl. I will straight rock your world. I will buy you all the flowers you want. I will freaking opposite of Miley Cyrus. You, I don't understand how that <laughs> Wreck, insane, <wrecking> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just don't. I yeah, I was gonna do more, but never mind. I was, but yeah, I don't get it. It's because they all want to date each other because they all work together. So that's like the whole yeah. I mean that's thing, the, but like, that's all the, that's probably all they interact with and all they see. So yeah, come on, live. There's hotter dudes than Bo freaking Dallas. Yeah. Yikes. Holy anyway, it. two dudes with attitudes. Let's go. It's the two dudes and the attitudes ruthless, aggressively speaking. So let's do this. We're rhyming, then they hit it, get your attention. The five star broadcast, yeah. start to the ending. Whether it's the E or it's all E, the two dudes with the attitudes will bring the heat. Get the point, yeah, it's on time to lock in. Listen to the podcast where they get it popping. Two dudes with attitudes, let's go. It's the two dudes and the attitudes, ruthless, aggressively speaking, so let's do this. We're riding.